The Girl in 6E by A.R. Torrey. Sex cam girl Deanna Madden, who uses the alias Jessica Rayleigh, hasn't left her apartment in three years because she's obsessed with murder and is afraid of killing someone. An unhealthy obsession with murder is referred to as dachnomania. Her neighbor, Simon, locks her in at night in exchange for drugs. The obsession with murder started after her mother killed her brother, sister, and father. We find out later that Deanna killed her mother after seeing the bodies of her other family members. So she has killed before and would kill again if someone enters her room. Deanna has two therapists, a sex therapist and a therapist she talks about her murder inclinations with. Her sex therapist is gay, so she doesn't have to worry about turning him on when she describes her sessions. Her other therapist is like a friend for whom she can talk to about almost anything. About half the book is about Deanna's sex cam clients. She mentions their sexual fetishes. For instance, some have foot fetishes, some are into masochism, others are into pegging, and so forth. Deanna has a few friends. One is a hacker named Mike. He helps her find out information on clients, and he helps her solve the Annie case. Another friend is Jeremy. He is a delivery man that she almost kills after he enters her apartment unannounced. Deanna has a client who calls himself Ralph. His real name is Michael. He causes her to be suspicious because he wants her to role play as if she were a little girl named Annie. When Annie turns up missing, Deanna knows he's the reason why. Deanna finally leaves her apartment to go save Annie. She agrees to go on a date with Jeremy in exchange for using his truck. Now, a lot of things in this book don't add up, and these are a couple of examples of them. For one, she leaves her apartment and has little to no problem readjusting to the outside world. In reality, I would think she'd probably have multiple panic attacks, anxiety, and maybe even some paranoia. And two, Jeremy lets her use his truck like it's literally no big deal. Now, he hardly knows her. She even tried to kill him once, and yet he still lends her his truck anyway. Deanna eventually saves Annie and returns her to her parents, the Thompsons. Deanna's only request is that she remain anonymous. Now, after saving Annie, Deanna kills Michael. She didn't have to kill him, though. It seems that she needed to satisfy her bloodlust. She describes how to cut someone's throat in graphic detail. For instance, she says, in movies, they refer to the jugular. But the jugular is actually a vein located on the outer portion of the neck. When slicing a throat, you actually want to go for the carotid artery located in the small indentations on either side of the windpipe. And afterwards, the police find out that Michael has abducted eight other girls before Annie. So he deserved what he got from Deanna. At the end of the book, Deanna transfers $200,000 to the Thompson's account, and she agrees to go on that date with Jeremy. This is the date that she owes him. And she decides to change her life. So the book ends on a brighter note than it started with. Thank you for watching. Bye.